Did you guys see the Millennium Falcon just fly by? Well, that's cool because we're going to be talking about a Star Wars character today in our last part of the Armor of God series. Stick with me. Welcome back. If you want to turn in your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to look at verse 17, just the end part. And it says, And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's the last part of the armor of God that Paul is talking to us about. So that's what we're going to look at today, is the sword of the Spirit. So first, remember our three points for this series, for each part of armor, is put it on, practice it, and then deploy it, just like you would with a normal piece of armor. So first, how can we practice putting on the Word of God? Well, there's a lot of different ways. It can be hidden in our hearts. We can memorize scripture. If you had, uh, if you were to think about like a normal weapon, if you had a sword or maybe a self-defense weapon that you had, but you never used it or looked at it or maybe you just sat in the closet or under your bed or locked up somewhere, but you never learned how to use it, it would be pretty useless when you actually needed it in a dire situation. Same goes with the Word of God. If we never pick it up and put it in our hilt and practice memorizing scripture, it's kind of pointless. One of my favorite scriptures about memorizing scripture is Psalm 119.11. It says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now that's pretty applicable, so I'm just going to leave it with that. Even Jesus memorized scripture. In the New Testament, he gets challenged by Satan when Satan's trying to throw scripture at him and get him to do things when he's being tempted in the wilderness. And Jesus is like, actually, it says this. And it just totally blows away all of the enemy's attacks. So how can we practice it besides memorizing it and putting it in our heads and in our hearts? We could be a doer of the word. James 1.22 literally says to be doers of the word and not only hearers. It's really important to find applications for scripture in your life. That's something that I love to do when I'm going through scripture and discipleship. Even if we're just going through a chapter at a time, I feel like, what's an application that God's speaking to you right now from this verse? Or you can look at the context of it as well. Going back to the Star Wars universe, (laughs) again, Star Wars is pretty big in our house, and I thought I could bring it back for the closing of this series. Laser swords, or lightsabers, I thought were the coolest analogy for the sword of the spirit. One of my favorite Jedis, um, or Jedi learners, is Ahsoka Tano. And she said something in one of the episodes we were watching once that reminded me of how important God's word is. I'm just going to quote it here. She says um, to another friend that... This weapon, talking about her lightsaber, is her life, and that she's not supposed to lose it. Think about God's word like that. If God's word is our life, and we're supposed to use it and apply it, and we're not supposed to lose it in a sense by not using it, think of how different our life could be if we treated our Bibles, or our swords, like that like a Jedi's weapon that it's our life and we're not going to let it go. We're going to use it. Hebrews 4.12 is a great example of how we can deploy God's word and really use it in our defense. It says, The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And that really is what the armor of God is trying to protect. It's protect us from the enemy. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's a a lot of times a mental 
attack that the enemy wants to put on us. He wants us to distract us from all the good that God has for us in our lives. So if we have the sword of the spirit equipped, it can be in our lives, dividing the joint and the marrow and discerning our thoughts and intentions and keeping those focused on God rather than on what the enemy wants us to distract us with. So we can use all of these pieces of armor to be more equipped, more efficient, and more resistant to the enemy's attacks. Thank you so much for joining me for this series. I really hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't. There's another great series that's wrapping up on the Beatitudes that my coworker Aaron is doing. It's awesome. You should check it out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.